To, to address Authentic Z's uh, uh, comment, um, I miss the George Lucas imaginative minds of the past. Guys that come into the new game, new world, new system, I feel everything the same. And Authentic Z, I would just like to say that is why I enjoy the, the Souls games so much. Because though they have a formula of how their mechanics work, their world building is nothing short of perfection um because it forces you to learn what's going on everything is different like their bloodborne was phenomenally built um bloodborne to yeah. me is their best world based game i mean built uh world game that i've seen in a while. absolutely um and then you follow up strong with sekiro and then um you go back to demon souls which was phenomenal um, you know go ahead I, I just want to say something, and because you know we're talking about like games that are safe and games that break the mode, like I, I have got to give a shout out to to the guys over at From Software because they are evil geniuses. Because the reality of the matter is, like they made a concept of a unsafe game viably safe to investors. These guys said we're going to make a game that you can't beat. <laughs> and and you can beat it, but you can't beat it because most of you are going to be too big of sissies to stick around and play it. And they made that game. People got upset. It was niche. It went away. They came back. They said, you know what? Now we, we're not going to do Demon Souls. We're going to do Dark Souls. Y'all still can't beat it. And then some people say, you know what? Hey, sh I kind of figured out how to beat this. This is kind of cool. And then I then came they, out with Dark Souls too. Then they hit Dark Souls 2, and they said, hey, you still can't beat this. And then at first it was like five people. Then about ten people was like, hey, on, we on, beat on, that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me do the history. Let me Go do ahead. the history. So Go then ahead. they had Go Demon ahead. Souls. First we had Demon Souls. Demon Souls was this new aspect of video game of difficulty in which they did not hold your hand. And then they was like, okay, that's cool. Here comes Dark Souls. Dark Souls was revolutionary. That game was phenomenal. That's when you had two bosses. Um, I, they had golden armor. I can't specifically remember their names, but then you had them. Difficult. Then you had Dark Souls 2. Uh, one thing about Dark Souls 1, if you had a phenomenal shield, you're good. I'm just saying block shield. Oh. And then Demon, in Dark Souls 2, the shield aspect was even greater. Then after Dark Souls 3, what you're thinking Dark Souls, I mean, after Dark Souls 2, you're thinking Dark Souls 3. No, we're coming at you with Bloodborne. The complete opposite of Dark Souls. With Dark Souls, you had fat rolls. You had to understand what it what uh what it means to uh, Hey, real quick, Authentic Z, thank you so much for the gifts, uh, man. Do we do appreciate that. that. Absolutely. Um, Jazz, uh, Jazzer, uh, LOL, I'm definitely about to address that. I'm going to address that heavy. Um, so in Dark Souls 2 to Bloodborne, you can see the complete difference of mechanics. Dark Souls had a very slow type of movement compared to what Dark Souls 2, in fact, to what Bloodborne is. And that was phenomenal. Bloodborne was fast paced. You was able to somewhat match the speed to a lot of these bosses that you face. And then here mm -hmm. comes Bloodborne DLC, the old hunters. And dear God. It wasn't sweet. Oh my God. The Orphan of Cost, Lady Maria. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, those fights were so delicious. Uh, yeah, Ludwig and it, and was it's... amazing. Oh, and then after Hormone's done, after that. This is where I always put Bloodborne up above Dark Souls 3. Even though Dark Souls 3 was great, world base was huge, Bloodborne allowed your character to still move as fast as some of those bosses you face. Dark Souls 3 did not allow that. You still you wasn't moving as smoothly as some of these characters in which you face in Dark Souls 3. 
um, with your built character. And then we have Sekiro. Sekiro came through, was like, nah, you have this sword, you have parry. Get with it or get lost. Everyone moves fast. Right. Delicious. Right. And if and if you can't beat this drop kick and troll, go play something else. Go drop go play something else. And then you have Elden Ring. Um Jazzer, I'm so happy that you beat um uh, Elden Ring. Um it was a very frustrating game for me to beat. I got the platinum. And you can see the complete difference of how slow Demon Souls is compared to what Elden Ring is right yeah. now. A complete one hundred percent difference of speed yeah. and that is the evolution of what Elden Ring brought and I have my gripes with it it's it is crazy because it's like the fat roll and like in Elden Ring is almost just as fast as the normal roll in, in Demon Souls come on it's now. outrageous come on now and then the, I still have my gripes because the 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 relentless attack aspect that Elden Ring put within there, I am um, I, I, I I want them to go back to have more v- uh, variety of bosses on how they move and how uh, the mechanics are some easy, some hard in the From Software space that you had into the um, what is it, into the Sekiro's, into the um, Bloodborne, which not every boss is just this relentless person of endless attacks where you just have you get two hits and then you and then you move so oh my god dude from software is just a phenomenal gaming studio uh, yeah for sure yeah but definitely like overall like the point to say in reference to those guys is they literally took something that wasn't safe and they did it so good and they did it over and over and over again they did change the formula a little bit from time to time, sped things up, slowed things down, made things a little more user friendly. Everyone got mad and said, we need an easy mode. We don't need an easy mode. Go away if you feel that way. But they did it in an unsafe way to the point now that they essentially are safe. Like it is now okay for you to release a game that is going to stress out your player again. We've not had that really since like the Sega Genesis and like the arcade days. Um, so it's nice to know that like we're starting to get back to a normal flow of games that are difficult to beat and challenging for the sake of being challenging. Um, we we got a we got a lot of viewers out here. I just want to remind y'all: make sure you go ahead and lock in that follow. Like, if you do want to sub, we appreciate the sub, whether it's a free prime or whether it is the uh, the um, five ninety nine that you drop on us. But definitely make sure you hit that follow because you don't want to miss a chance to win a gift card. We've given away over we we've given away almost a hundred dollars in gift cards today, y'all. Like. Don't don't miss out on your opportunity for the Bird Lines podcast gift card giveaway. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms and comment golden in your selected platform everywhere for a chance to win and also for the chance to be a part of the gang gang mafia. You know what I'm saying? We out here. Um, uh, so, Perry. Let me address Jordan. Uh, you only say F Bloodborne simply because you need your hand held. Um, if you just want me to come help you, Oh, that's fire bloodborne i i i am a master in bloodborne to the point where i mm. can beat that game almost with my eyes closed because i just know where everything is i love bloodborne um hey <clears throat> chris, chris i understand sekiro sekiro the the headless eight oh buddy that game almost got snapped in half but i digress yeah, I, I was done with Sekiro after like I think I got to like the third map location. It was just it was too stressful and it wasn't like it was unbeatable. But I was all right. I've played enough of this. I've gotten enough headaches. Ten out of ten. Let's go do other stuff now. Shout out to Authentic Z, the art of forcing players to challenge themselves and not notice they are conquering their personal fears. Sekiro made me good in games like Elden Ring, Horizon, Assassin's Creed because of that is beautiful oh absolutely absolutely um and and authentic z i actually relate to you on that topic uh i was sharing i think on our last episode we took off mother's day weekend uh, but i was sharing uh one of my experiences with that where i had played star star wars uh jedi fallen order um 
and the first time I played it, I found the game to be kind of difficult. Um, just because I was not completely programmed into the Souls game. Uh, but I am a gamer. Like I've been a gamer all my life. And Tenchu is a game that I love, and I wish we could get a Tenchu remaster, remake, or something of the sort. But when I saw Sekiro, knowing from Soft actually at this point owns Sekiro, uh, I was like, oh, I mean, they, sorry, from Soft actually owns Tenchu. I was like, man, this is giving me Tenchu vibes, and I have played it to get my fix. Um, and when I played that, I was curious enough to go and play Demon Souls. I played a little bit of Bloodborne before that even. And then I did play like a healthy chunk of Elden Ring and was I was good enough to beat all of the games, just not willing to commit to the headaches it would require to beat any of these games. Um, but when I went back to Fallen Order after the fact, like I got through the first it had to be like first 70% of the campaign in that game before I died once. And I was so shocked at the skills that I learned from playing these souls games. Like if you, if you want to step up your, your gaming ability, absolutely go play a souls game, commit to it, learn it or Sifu. Sifu is another game that really forces you to learn those uh, mechanics of a game and will translate over to other games uh, being mastered. Like go check those games out. So yeah, shout out to you, Authentic Z. You really in the zone today. I rock with you. 